All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Phantom Weather Channel. In today's video, we're going to be breaking down the upcoming multiple days of severe weather and flash flooding. We're going to be breaking down and forecasting what these storms could look like over the course of the next few days, and also what time you can expect the severe storms and flooding in your area. Before we hop into the video, though, I want to say you guys do like, comment, subscribe, and share. Also, be sure to check out my Weather Discord server, which you can find the invite link to in the description down below. And also, ask that you check out another Weather Discord server from a weather company called TC Vortex. There's going to be some storm chasing and weather content over there. Uh, it's a really Really cool uh, Discord server, so be sure to go check that out. A lot of cool stuff over there. Let's get into today's video, though. We're taking a look at our day one categorical outlook for severe weather, which, as you can see here in this yellow shade throughout portions of east central Kansas through northern uh, Missouri, northwestern Illinois, southeastern Iowa, and portions of central Wisconsin and far southern uh, upper Michigan as well. Here, this is where we have a slight risk of severe thunderstorms through tonight, uh, where some scattered severe weather will be possible. If you're in this dark green shade here, which is either this area here in Montana and far northwestern Wyoming, or the this area surrounding the uh, slight risk region here in portions of the uh, southern plains throughout the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes. This is where some isolated severe weather is going to be possible. If you're in this light green shade, uh, only general thunderstorms are expected. We don't expect any severe weather, but some thunderstorm activity could be possible through tonight. Breaking out our individual outlooks here, here would be our tornado outlook, which in this green shade here throughout portions of our slight risk region, especially here. Uh, this is where we have the potential of maybe seeing an isolated tornado or two touching down. No widespread tornadic activity is expected today and tonight. Uh, how However, a couple tornadoes could be possible, especially throughout and just around this green shade here throughout mainly our slight risk region. Now, breaking down our severe hail outlook here throughout our slight risk region, there is a chance of seeing some scattered severe hail, a 15% chance of seeing hail exceeding an inch in diameter within 25 miles of a given location. Uh, so there is some potential that we could be maybe looking at some severe hail today and tonight. And our most widespread risk here, which will also include this risk area in portions of the northern Rockies as well, is going to be our damaging wind risk. If you're in this yellow risk here, there's there's a chance of seeing some scattered damaging winds of over 58 miles per hour capable of doing damage to roof siding and trees. Now, breaking down what that severe weather is going to look like through tonight here, we're going to start off by taking a look at our CAPE. CAPE stands for Convective Available Potential Energy. It's basically just the measurement of instability in the atmosphere for thunderstorms to occur, and the more of it that there is, the more growing those thunderstorms can do, and overall that gives us a higher severe weather threat. Specifically, if we're looking at over a thousand cape, which is indicated by those blue shades and above, there is enough instability in the atmosphere for some severe weather to occur, but we see widespread cape values here throughout portions of Missouri and Illinois that is actually going to be over 2,000 in some scenarios. Locally, uh, localized values over 3,000 as well, so some pretty strong cape by the time that we get to about noon central daylight time. Uh, later on today here. Now, breaking down our shear, our bulk shear is 6 kilometers above the ground level here. This one is crucial in determining supercell formation and storm organization all around here. The higher the shear, the more organizing those storms can do as well, and that would also give us a higher uh, severe weather threat as a whole. Typically, we're looking at over 45 knots, though, which is indicated by those pink shades and above, especially mixing it over top of those discrete storms that are kind of those single cell storms off on their own in an area of high instability. Uh, there is a chance that those storms could potentially form into supercell those rotating thunderstorms that can produce tornadoes uh, and other severe weather hazards as well. So we really want to keep an eye on that. Today, we don't expect much supercellular activity. However, some shear uh, will be favorable over top of the storms for some storm organization to occur, at least. The most uh, significant shear will be throughout portions of eastern Iowa, western and central Wisconsin, and uh, portions of far southeastern Minnesota as well here. Well, we'll see some shear mainly ranging from 40 to 50 knots in most scenarios. Now, breaking down what our storms are going to look like at this point, most of our storm activity will actually be throughout portion of central Missouri or throughout portion of central Missouri here where we will have some Cape bios that are going to be mainly ranging in one to three thousand range here with some isolated to scattered thunderstorm activity over portions of eastern Iowa, Minnesota and Wisconsin as well here uh, in that area of pretty favorable shear for some uh, storm organization to occur uh, favoring our severe weather threat. By the time that we get to about 3 p.m. central time here, here would be our Cape at this point and it's actually going to be growing quite a bit here. We will see some isolated values throughout portions of central Wisconsin where the Cape will actually be over 4,000 in these purple shades. So the instability is def definitely there throughout the day for some severe weather to occur. Most of our storms that are going to be centered throughout portions of eastern Missouri and western Illinois at this point, out ahead of those storms, it'll be mainly ranging in the 2,000 to 4,000 range. So definitely favorable for some severe weather activity to occur. Now throughout the area, there's not going to be very significant shear. So the storm organization may not be necessarily there. 
Uh, however, the instability will definitely be favorable of some organization to occur. We do see some areas of shear where it could be over 25 knots throughout portions of southwestern Wisconsin, uh, western Illinois, and eastern Iowa here. So we'll have to keep an eye on that potentially. Take a look at what our storms are looking like here. They are organizing into clusters throughout portions of eastern Missouri, western Illinois, northeastern uh, Iowa here, southeastern Minnesota, and western Wisconsin. We'll have to keep an eye on these storms and see what they do. The most uh, favorable thing that's going to be uh, helping these storms stay together is likely going to be the instability because, again, the shear isn't going to be particularly strong. However, the instability in Cape will definitely be there for these storms to organize a little bit and potentially be severe. Those growing updrafts. Now, take a look at our Cape. By the time that we get to about 6 p.m., you can see it will still be favorable on a scattered basis for some severe weather to occur out of the uh, out ahead of the storms here, mainly ranging in the 1 to 3,000 range. We'll have some more storms up there in portions of west central Wisconsin as well, and that will be aided by some pockets of pretty strong shear here, according to our NAM 3KM model, and this one is actually showing some shear values over 40 knots there throughout portions of northwest central Wisconsin, and that will be where most of our storms are situated at this point here. So these storms in northwest central Wisconsin uh, in the early evening hours here, I think they have a chance of maybe producing uh, some pretty significant severe weather activity here uh, because of the strong instability and the strong shear over top of the storms in northwest central Wisconsin. These storms that throughout portion of central Illinois could still hold on and potentially be severe, uh, given the the fact that the instability will still be favorable enough of some uh, scattered severe weather activity to occur. By the time that we get to about 9 p.m., our instability is going to be waning a little bit, but still some pretty significant instability on the western side of our risk area. On the western side of the risk area, it's mainly going to be ranging in the 2,000 to 4,000 range for Cape values, and that will definitely be favorable of some maybe uh, continuing severe weather at this point. We will see some severe weather throughout portions of Missouri and northwestern Iowa at this point. And something that is going to be interesting at this point, we will see an area of pretty significant significant shear throughout portions of northwestern Iowa, which is where our storms are going to be associated at this point, or at least an isolated storm. Now, again, our models are going to be different, and they're not all necessarily going to show the same convection lineup here. However, our NAM model is indicating that we will have some storms throughout northwestern Iowa that will be in an area of strong instability. They'll kind of be discreet and off on their own, and also in an area of strong shear. Again, many models are going to be very different for what's actually going to play out as far as where these storms are going to be situated and what the shear is going to look like over top of them. But it is important to keep in mind, or that is important to keep in mind. However, uh, we do see some pretty significant ingredients for some severe weather throughout portions of northwestern Iowa, so we will keep an eye on it. However, we do have some storms off to the south throughout portions of southern uh, Missouri at this point in western Illinois that could, could still potentially be severe given the instability. Shortly after this point, though, likely around midnight, the severe weather ingredients will likely die out uh, given the fact that the instability and shear will likely won't be there as these storms progress eastward throughout portions of central Illinois. So that will likely be it for the severe weather uh, by the time that we get into the late evening hours today by about 9 p.m. central time. So here be our day two category outlook for severe weather, which would be for tomorrow and tomorrow night, which as you can see, we have two separate marginal risks of severe weather here where some isolated severe storms are going to be possible. One of them throughout portions of the Ohio Valley and the Eastern Plains in that dark green shade. We have another one surrounding our slight risk of severe weather throughout portions of eastern North Dakota, northeastern South Dakota, and northwestern Minnesota. Uh, in this slight risk, some scattered severe storms are going to be possible tomorrow and tomorrow night. Here will be our individual outlook, so here will be our tornado outlook. And as you can see, in our eastern marginal risk area, we have a change of maybe seeing an isolated tornado or two touchdown throughout portions of eastern Iowa, far southwest uh, Wisconsin here, also throughout portions of central Illinois and far southwest central Indiana. There's the potential of maybe seeing an isolated tornado touchdown, but again, like today, widespread tornadic activity is not expected. Here would be our severe hail outlook, which on a little bit more a uh, widespread basis here throughout both of our risk areas here, there is the potential of maybe seeing some isolated severe hail. But again, nothing too widespread as expected. We'll probably only see a few instances of severe hail, most likely. Here would be our damaging wind outlook. That one is going to be the most significant risk for tomorrow, or the most widespread risk at least. And we'll see that throughout our slight risk region in the upper Midwest here. So breaking down what these storms are going to look like, we're going to take this all the way to 6 p.m. tomorrow. So really, it'll be the evening hours before the severe weather really crosses our main region here throughout portions of East Central North Dakota. At that point, though, there will be some pretty significant cave out ahead of the advancing storms, mainly ranging in the 1 to 2,000 range with locally higher values possible. On an isolated basis, it will be favorable of some severe weather. But something interesting to see here is our shear. We will see some pretty significant shear that will gradually progress eastward uh, along where our storms are going to be situated at this point in portions of East Central North Dakota. So that could potentially mean that these storms could be severe throughout portions of Eastern uh, North Dakota 
Dakota, given the fact that we will see some pretty strong instability and shear over top of the storms here. Now, by the time that we get to about 9 p.m., these storms could still potentially be severe, given the fact that the instability will mainly be ranging in the 1 to 2,000 range out ahead of the storms in eastern North Dakota at this point. Our shear will also be very strong, with some values actually over 80 knots in some scenarios in these red shades and portions of northeastern North Dakota. And here will be what our storms look like at this point. By the time that we get to about midnight, these storms could actually still hold on, but likely going to wane a little bit, given the fact that most of our storms are actually going to be to the north of where this instability will be. And because of that, they will likely wane. However, we will see some pretty strong uh, shear over top of those storms. So th these storms could potentially still remain organized, but it will likely wane after this period here. Here will be the shear at this point, which again, north of where the instability is going to be is where the most significant shear will be. And here will be the, where the storms are going to be situated at this point. So the southern or portion of southeastern South Dakota here, they're in an area of a little bit better instability, uh, but the northern side of the storms, they will be in an area of strong shear, so they could still potentially remain organized. As we get to about 3 a.m. or about 3 a.m. Uh, central time here, there could still maybe be some ongoing severe weather uh, in out ahead of where these blue shades are going to be, where this cave is going to be over 1,000 in some scenarios. However, it will likely wane after this period, given the instability is going to be dying out overnight here, as it typically does. But our shear will still hold on as it progresses eastward at the portions of northwestern Minnesota, with again, in those red shades, some isolated values over 80 knots. And our storms are going to be situated over top of that, so there is a chance that those storms could remain severe throughout the overnight hour. So you're going to want to have multiple ways to receive warnings especially if you live in the uh, North Dakota, Minnesota uh, state line. And shortly after that period, the ingredients will likely die out for severe weather. And that will bring us into our day three categorical outlook for severe weather, which would be for Tuesday and Tuesday night. And as you can see, we have a widespread slight risk of severe weather here throughout portions of the Great Lakes, especially throughout portions of far eastern Minnesota, most of Wisconsin, western and central upper Michigan, and a large portion of lower Michigan here, Lake Michigan as well. Uh, we could be looking at some scattered severe thunderstorms Tuesday and Tuesday night. However, the Storm Prediction Center has noted that they could potentially upgrade this severe weather risk region. And the reason for doing so is the fact that there will be some extreme instability potentially. And if that does pan out, it could potentially produce some significant damaging winds along with it. The details are a little bit slim, and we'll break down that a little bit further uh, if we make a video tomorrow and especially Tuesday. Uh, however, it is possible that we could definitely see some severe weather on Tuesday and Tuesday night across the Great Lakes. So you're going to want to be on the lookout and also know that whatever risk region that you're in today, it will likely change with time. So just keep an eye on it if you are in those marginal or slight risk regions. Our marginal risk expands all the way through the southern plains into the Great Lakes in the northeast here uh, through Tuesday night. So we'll definitely have to keep an eye on the severe weather throughout that time period. And then here will be our excessive rainfall outlook for today and tonight here which as you can see, we currently have a widespread a slight risk of excessive rainfall through tonight here throughout portions of Missouri, Illinois, Iowa, and Wisconsin, also portions of far southeastern Minnesota and far northeast central uh, Arkansas. We could be looking at some scattered flash flooding today and tonight. Uh, in these green shades here, we're looking at some isolated flash flooding. Here will be our excessive rainfall outlook for tomorrow and tomorrow night. The, the most uh, widespread or at least the largest risk area here uh, will be throughout portions of the Great Lakes where we could be looking at some isolated flash flooding. We have another one there throughout portion of the upper Midwest as well. We could be looking at that potentially. And here will be our day three uh, outlook for excessive rainfall uh, here for our portion of Tuesday and Wednesday. And that's a very uh, widespread marginal risk of excessive rainfall. So we'll definitely have to keep an eye on it. They're saying that Tuesday and Tuesday night uh, areas all the way throughout the southern plains through the Great Lakes into the northeast here. We could be looking at some isolated flash flooding. That is a very, very broad excessive rainfall outlook here. I think there is a chance that we can maybe see some upgrades because of that. They definitely left some room for some upgrades, uh, so we'll definitely have to keep an eye on the excessive rainfall uh, for Tuesday and Tuesday night, along with the severe weather. Here will be the rainfall that can be expected over the course of time, uh, which if you're in these blue shades, you can expect about a half of an inch to an inch of rainfall. If you're in these pinks, you can expect about an inch to two inches. If you're in these reds, you can expect two to two to four inches, and if you are in these golds, you can expect over four inches of rainfall. This will all be until Wednesday, August 11th at 8 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Here, so some pretty widespread heavy rainfall is expected throughout portions of the Missouri Valley into the Great Lakes. So that is going to wrap it up for today's video. If you guys did enjoy it and you want to see more of my videos, be sure to subscribe to the Phantom Weather Channel. Also, be sure to uh, like, comment, subscribe, and share. Also, be sure to check out our Discord servers. Again, my Discord server and TC Vortex's server. You can find both of those in the description down below. But until the next video, stay safe, and we'll talk to you guys back here in the next video.